Hi everyone. I just wanted to stop in really quick here and do a video um, to share a little bit more about myself and a little bit more about my Stampin' Up! business. I really feel that any business, that the best thing is to build relationships with those who you're working with. And so I think learning a little bit more about me and my business will help you guys understand a little bit more about me and what I want to bring to you guys when it comes to my Stampin' Up! business. Um, so first off, I guess, I have some little note cards here so that I don't forget to tell you some things. But first off, I just want to say my name is Carmen Broxma, and I, I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Arvada, Colorado. And I became a, I joined actually Stampin' Up! in 1998. But first off, mostly I wanted to just say that I love crafting of any kind. I mean, I'm a crafter at heart. Before Stampin' Up! Um, I loved to decorative paint. And I loved scrapbooking. And I love gardening. Um, you might think, well, what does that have to do with crafting? But I think when you're out in the garden and you're designing your flower beds or I love miniature gardening. So when I'm designing my miniature gardens, I feel that takes a little bit of creativity as well to just lay out the flowers and the design and the texture and all that. So that is part of my crafting outlet as well. Gardening is just something I really enjoy and I am so excited that we're approaching the season where we get to do that again. So um, one thing uh, with, our, with my crafting is like when my dad was still alive, uh, my sister and I and my dad had this um, business. We called it Cordova's Crafty House. And it's because we, we all love to craft. In my family, it seems to be th the thing. But um, basically what we did is uh, my dad um, cut all the wood and, and stuff like that. Me and my sister did most of the painting. But I did dabble a little bit in in cutting wood as well and I got I I got my own scroll saw so it it was a lot of fun to learn that and we just had a lot of fun creating projects and selling them at craft fairs and all that kind of stuff and I just really miss those days and actually I miss decorative painting and so I'm hoping now that I can um, start doing a little bit more of that as well as my Stampin' Up! business. So in 2004, my husband was diagnosed with cancer, and I, like I said, I joined Stampin' Up! in 1998, and so I was loving it. And then when he was diagnosed with cancer, I continued to try to do my classes. I was doing classes in the house, and I was doing stamp camps with other demonstrators in the area, and I just started to realize it was getting too much for me to try to deal with his diagnosis. And so I ended up leaving Stampin' Up! in, um, in 2005 so that I could focus on him and his health. And um, it was, it was uh, a difficult thing for me because I really, really love Stampin' Up! and being a part of this company. Um, but I went ahead and and left and decided about 18 months later that it wasn't working for me. I really was missing my Stampin' Up! family and friends and stuff. So I went ahead and rejoined. And um, uh, I think I rejoined back in, I think it was, I can't remember, 2007 maybe? I don't remember. I was trying to see if I had it here in my notes. Yeah. So 18 months later, from when I left Stampin' Up!, I rejoined in 2007. Now, mostly, like I said, I, I, I did classes in my house, and I did do um, stamp camps. But mostly I was a hobbyist and uh, what they call a discount shopper. And that just meant that it, when I bought the products, I got a discount. So that's how I basically started, even though I was doing classes here and there and stamp camps but I really really wanted to make it a, a business but I just didn't didn't have t 
time to do that because I, I worked outside the home and, you know, full-time jobs outside the home. And, and it didn't allow for me to really focus on Stampin' Up! as a full-time business. But one of the things that um, was really such a blessing for me is I went to work for a company called Memory Makers Magazine. And you, some of you may be aware of that. It's a scrapbooking magazine. And it was founded by Michelle Gerbrandt. And um, I love that job, mostly because I was in my element. I was around a bunch of crafters. And even though I was in the sales part of it, where I was working with the scrapbooking stores uh, and selling, helping, you know, with their orders when they would buy uh, magazines and stuff like that, I was still around the crafters. And I, and I did get times where I could go and um, help out in the crafting area. And in fact, um, I did a few scrapbook pages and it got published in the magazine, which was was fun for me. And then um, I had created a calendar that I was working on of, of my uh, great niece. And um, Michelle Gerbrandt took it. She was... Um, she would do these shows on, it was like a PBS channel. It was a TV show. And so she took my calendar to show it. And so that was really fun to see my work on TV. So I was really blessed with that. And um, But when I left there, I went to go work for um, the church. And I went there, um, uh, I can't remember, I think it was 2003. And... Um, I became the office manager at Family in Christ Church. And it was funny because even though I left Memory Makers Magazine, I um, still later on and after a while uh, made contact again with Michelle from Memory Makers Magazine because she also now works for a church. So we were able to connect again through a different avenue, which was fun. So... Um, as you get to know me a little bit more, you're going to find that my relationship with Christ is very, very important to me. And it is my primary focus when it comes to um, to my life because I, I really, truly believe that without him, I would not be where I am. So I'm, I, my relationship with him is very important to me. And um, I am part of a card ministry team at at the church and uh, it's really fun to be able to make cards that I can share with the community that I'm a part of and it brings them joy and it makes me happy and it's just it's just a real blessing to be a part of that ministry so um, back in October of last year I went ahead and quit my job at the church after being there for 17 years because I really really wanted to focus on my Stampin' Up! business and I knew that if I wanted to get it going I was not going to be able to do it and have a full-time job so I went ahead and quit so now I am trying to build a Stampin' Up! business and so the first thing that I had to decide was what was going to be my business name and I wanted something that was going to be meaningful to me. And so over the years, I have had a lot of loss in my life. Um, and I found myself just coming to a point of where I was losing my joy in life. And um, it was getting very difficult. And I decided, you know, I need to figure out what I need to do to bring that joy back into my life. And I was, there's a scripture in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, and it's basically where Paul lists the nine specific behaviors. And these are the fruits of the Spirit. And um, I just thought it was interesting that the first two was love and joy. And so I thought, you know, this is perfect because the first thing is love. And loving Christ is my priority. 
And then it's followed by joy. And I was losing my joy. And so I thought, you know, I need to figure out how to get that joy back. And came to realize that joy is a choice. You have to choose joy. And so I came to realize that joy isn't about my circumstances or the things that's going on in my life. It's a choice that I make. So when I got to thinking about that, I thought, you know what? I want that to be included in my business name. So that's when I came up with uh, Choose Joy with Carmen because I want other people, when I share my creative projects and stuff with you all, that you'll find joy in it and that you will be able to create them and share them with others. I think that is so important. So, um, uh, I don't know. I just, I think, I think that is the one thing that brings me joy is when I can bring joy to others. So I, when I made up my mind that that was going to be my business name, I knew that it was still going to take time to get that started. And so I had found this shirt that I'm wearing, and I'll see if I can show you. And I decided not to wear it until I actually got my business up and running. So today I says this is the first day I'm going to put it on so that I can uh, um, share it with you all. So as I started this business, I have come across a couple of mentors that have been amazing to me. Uh, and I just wanted to give a shout out to them and thank them so much because they are both Stampin' Up! demonstrators and they run a very successful business and I am learning a lot from them. And so I just want to give a shout out to them. It's Rhonda Wade and Janet Wakeland and they have just been amazing as far as my business is concerned. So, but one thing that I have learned is that um, it is so easy to get trapped into the idea of wanting to run my business based on what I see other demonstrators doing. And I finally realized that I am not those other demonstrators. I'm not a Rhonda. I'm not a Janet. I am me. And I am who God made me to be. And so the one thing that's very important to me is being authentic. So it is so easy to want to get trapped into like, oh, I want to do that like so-and-so, or I want to do this, but I really want to run this business the way um, God is leading me and the way I think is going to be beneficial for you all and for me as well. So um, as I got to thinking about that, I was praying and saying, well, what what do I want my business to look like? And so um, I call these God wink moments because I don't believe in coincidences. I believe that God gives me the desires of my heart. And so I was sitting there thinking, well, what what is it going to look like for me? And all of a sudden, I something came to mind and it was um, that, it was a game, I think it was called. Um, Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Hopefully I'm saying it right because I don't know anything about this game or what it's about. So I had to go look it up, which is funny that I that even came to mind, but I guess it's because we have the same first name. So when I went to look it up, it says it's a series of mystery educational video games. And then I realized that she had other ones. They were, uh, or he, or I don't know what, anyway. But there was, where in the U.S. is Carmen San Diego? Where in Europe is Carmen San Diego? So I started thinking about that, and I thought, well, wouldn't that be fun? And so I decided that... One of my business focuses is going to be where in the craft room is Carmen Broxma. And all I can say is that is going to be a definite mystery 
for all of us, including me. Because I, I don't tend to like to plan my days um, because so many times I've planned out my day and then I've come to realize that at the end of the day, it didn't work out the way I had planned. And so I found myself getting disappointed over and over again. So I decided to stop planning my days and to do my best to just do work, what God has me to do that day. So I'm always inspired by the day's events and I'm always amazed at how they turn out because I didn't plan them. I think it's for me, and I know other people plan their days and it works fine for them, but for me, it was very disappointing when the day didn't work out the way I had planned. So I get inspired on the spur of the moment, and so I might say, oh, well, today I feel like making this, or I feel like doing that, and that's where I'm going to head because I think that that's where God is leading me, and I want to try to follow his lead. So... Um, so I just wanted to say that, you know, that as I am inspired in this new business journey, I hope that I will be able to inspire you to be creative and share what you create with others because joy is multiplied when shared. And I, I truly, truly believe that. So, so with that being said, I just want to say, if you don't want to miss out on where in the craft room is Carmen Broxma, then be sure to follow, like, share, subscribe, or whatever other actions are needed in this social media world to find me in the craft room. Um, I can tell you I'm learning a lot about social media and how it works, and so it's a little mind-boggling on how it works but I guess that's the way we are these days and so that's where we jump on the bandwagon if that's what needs to be happening so anyway I just wanted to tell you that currently I am working on clearing out some paper in my craft room um, I'm trying to focus this month on cleaning out my craft room and reorganizing and one of the problem areas that I have is collecting and hoarding Stampin' Up's designer series paper. I just love, love, love their designer series paper. It's just gorgeous. Uh, their designers that create them are amazing. But at some point, you got to get rid of it because there's just no more room in the craft room. So, um, I'm going to be doing a video here showing you how I organize my designer series paper and what I am doing to try to weed it out a little to make room so that I could buy more. So hopefully that video will be coming out in the next day or so. And I just want to let you all know that it's a beautiful day out here today. And so I'm going to take some time now and go outside and enjoy the sunshine and hope you all have a great rest of your day. And um, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.